baby. Parallel thoughts. And I'm Necrozak. The dude chanting. <laughs> yeah, that's Necrozak. <laughs> We're here to showcase two vastly different decks. Because Zach and I here, we don't have any symmetry when we're brewing together. So we thought we would uh, take it into our own hands. And then we're going to slap it together. Will the two decks yes. work? I don't, I don't, yes, no. I'm, I'm not really, I don't really I care. I mean, what does. Tell you the truth, I hope it works. What does work to. But even if it doesn't, like, you're going to tell us in the comments whose you thought is better. And which one you're going to build around. Or are you going to be as weird as us? And are you going to put both these into one deck. What does working together really now, mean, though? Unlike the other episodes, <laughs> though, this one's a little different. Uh, we we are definitely not throwing both of our decks into one, technically. Uh, why is that, Zach? Uh, today, you guys lucked out, and it's happy hour, because you're getting two for the price of one. Um, two, two? For one? Yes. How so? So... Our commanders for this episode are Thrasios Triton Hero, um, a very big boogeyman for our format, uh, and the Prismatic Piper, who we really actually wanted to build around. So Prismatic Piper, if you're unfamiliar, is a five-cost un uh, common legendary creature shapeshifter, and when it enters the battlefield before the game begins, I'm sorry, you choose... Uh, color, and Prismatic Piper is that color, and it has partner. So the whole concept is that... Benson picked a three-color pairing. I picked a three-color pairing, and we built two decks to showcase on this episode. You're in for a, a dumb ride, kids. Oh yeah, these are buckle in. These are good decks. These are good decks. Uh, I mean, I'm in Bant. I don't build with white. Um, I took a stab at it. It's a hot mess, but it's my hot mess. So uh, <laughs> my brain to give you, you know, for everyone listening or watching to give you an example about what happened to me with this deck. Um, there's a scene in Talladega Nights <laughs> where Ricky Bobby, he's in an interview. And then he kind of just says, like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Well, my brain didn't know what to do with its brain. Like, I just... I just threw some things together that I thought were janky. And, you know, like I said, I don't build white. I don't have any decks with white. Um, if I did, this is the dumb deck I would build. But first off, you know, we'll, we'll save the best for last act. Do you want to get into your pile? Of course. So um, I gave Benson the option of what colors he wanted to go with. And I ended up with Saltai. Terrible life choice. <laughs> Terrible um, life choice. I, I offered to do Bant. I did. And he said, no, I wanted to build with white. I said, okay. So we're doing Salt Eye for my build. Um, so if you're unfamiliar, that means Prismatic Piper is going to be black in this situation. And with how we uh, did this deck, it was um, we decided what cards we were going to use together. And then off screen, we decided on our ramp, our interaction, and cards that we were going to put in both decks. But primarily right now, we're going to focus on my list and we'll move to Benson's and we'll knock the rest out at the end. So I decided what I wanted to do was a uh, shapeshifter build with, of course, reanimation and cloning effects because surprise, surprise, you give, you give Zach Saltai and he does his three favorite. Uh, things. Yeah. No way. I, we do get to steal. No we way. We do get to steal. Mind blown. Mind blown. <laughs> so we're going to go through my list and we'll go through Benson's starting off. We actually have a card that is in, both decks but i have to talk about it in my my version first so we're dealing with alter the brood it's a one cost artifact whenever another permanent etbs under your control each opponent puts the top card of his or her library to his or her graveyard so what better way to steal people's stuff by making them discard it or mill it so you can reanimate it um a great way to i like a that. great way to reanimate is with animate dead uh, there is a billion lines of text on here. Just know you enchant a creature card in a graveyard, then it's yours. And it's a uh, Nago one Nago. That's the new Oracle text. Yeah, I'm not reading all that. I will, however, read this card because this card's sweet. If you don't look through Weatherlight, you need to because Weatherlight has so many cool, like weird cards. It's phenomenal. So Bone Dancer. 
It's a zombie. It's a 2 2 for 3. Not great rates. But you can pay zero. <laughs> you put the top creature card of Defending Player's Graveyard into play under your control. Bone Dancer deals no combat damage this turn. Uses ability only if Bone Dancer is attacking and is unblocked and only once each turn. So, really weird. All we're trying to do is hope people, you know, flip something from the top of their deck into the grave that you want to steal. Um, we do have ways to give Bone Dancer evasion so you can always guarantee you're going to get that reanimation effect. But yeah, that's why Alter Brood and other cards are going to be very, very good. Um, Buried Alive is a pseudo tutor in this deck. Two and a black versus sorcery. Like you're just going to search for three creatures, throw them in the graveyard. We uh, we like to do that. I like to do that. You know, it's a party. Um, next card is nothing like a party. Like, hey guys, <laughs> come over. We're getting buried alive. It's a, it's a gra- it'll be fun. It's a it's a graveyard smash. I don't. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh, go on. <laughs> just, just just go on. Uh, the next card is Cemetery Puka. Okay. It's one and hybrid Demir Demir. It's also a shape shifter. It's a one two. Whenever a creature card is put into a graveyard from play, you may pay one. If you do, Cemetery Puka becomes a copy of that creature and gains this ability. So this is another really fun card that I think is really overlooked in a lot of uh, a lot of decks. A lot of decks can really take advantage of this card. Um, so anytime you know something dies, you just can have it become this. Um. Seems fair. No, mm, I, I would say no mill deck is worth its salt if it doesn't play a Codex Strider. So that's one for an artifact. You tap target player mills a card, then you can pay five, tap and sack it. Return target creature, or sorry, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. So at worst, you can get a card back. At best, you just make some a mill card, which is fine. We want to steal things. It's a good way to do it. Yeah, I don't think we would be in Zaltai without running this guy. It's consuming aberration. You could play it in Demir, but it's better in Zaltai. Three blue and a black for a star star horror. Consuming aberrations, power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your opponent's graveyard. Whenever you cast a spell, each opponent reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land card. Put the cards that they reveal this way into the graveyard. So cards like Alter... Yeah, just because this card doesn't have evasion doesn't mean that you, you shouldn't be scared of it like this thing is terrifying there are plenty of like i said there are plenty of ways to give it evasion too but yeah just it almost sets on the battlefield and acts as like a enchantment for the most part right anytime we cast a spell so anytime we play magic you're going to make people mill and with stuff like alter the brood and codex strider consuming aberration just becomes massive on its own um, so, once again, worst case, it's the best block you're going to have. <laughs> best case, it just kills <laughs> someone by swinging. It's, it's fun. It's fun. Um, more uh, graveyard tutoring. We have Corpse Connoisseur. Four and a... Are you sure that you just didn't make, like, an Oracle text deck? Like, all these cards that I'm seeing right here just have, like, wall-to-wall text. Uh, um, yeah, basically. Uh. When you've played with the cards as long as I have, you just know what they do. Okay. Well, for those who don't know what this card does, get back into it. <laughs> Corpse kind of sewer is a 3-3 zombie wizard. When it ETBs, you can search your library for a creature card and put it into your graveyard. Then if you do, shuffle your library. And it has unearth for 3 and a black, so you can um, pay 3 and a black, return it from the graveyard to the battlefield, then exile it out at the beginning of the next uh, end step. Or if it would be put into the graveyard. So, or I'm sorry, if it would leave the battlefield. So this guy is just another buried alive and entomb type effect, but on a creature, which is kind of better. Now, with that, <laughs> just to clarify, is when if is it on a stick or is it on a body when it's an ability? Because I've heard both. I thought on a stick meant like you could slap that on an isochron scepter. I thought that's what it was. I like would, I would say a on stick. a body, right? Because... On a box. Yeah, playing with you and kind of knowing how you like to brew, on a stick definitely makes me think of Scepter. 
I don't play it. I, I, yeah, I do. Play and it's it. not even like you abuse it. You just want to do silly things. Like. Nurse sets reversal. Well, no, that's not silly. That's abusive. Deal. No, okay. Like, I don't know. You've done some things that I've been like, oh. Truth comes <laughs> out. Okay, maybe I hold that deck back a little bit. <laughs> you know you, you know what you've done, Orvar. You know. Um, back to the better version of this deck. We have Demir Doppelganger. One, a blue, and a black for, you guessed it, a shapeshifter. It's a zero two. You can pay one, a blue, and a black. Exile target creature card from a graveyard. Demir Doppelganger becomes a copy of that card, except it has this ability. So, once again really good graveyard removal and also if you've been milling people with altar or consuming aberration or codex shredder you can just get potentially one of their best creatures in their deck oh you know what we were we forgot to mention so all the cards that we're going to be naming off that aren't artifacts uh we gave ourselves a stipulation oh yes each card that we chose each card that we chose had to have the color that we picked so that's why some of these like you know there could be better cards out there in salty colors or uh or in band colors however yeah we gave yourselves the stipulation it has to have the color that we picked um i, I so. should specify there definitely aren't better cards than the ones i'm naming oh there's definitely better cards than my way <laughs> but we'll get to that uh so once again no black deck would be worth its salt if we weren't playing in tomb one black instant search your library for card put it that card into the graveyard then trophy or library people so often forget that it's just any card so you can hit cards with flashback or anything that has like a graveyard effect maybe even a land uh we're going to be hitting creatures but it is an option it's something you should definitely remember um, evil twin is the next thing on our list it's two blue and a black for a shapeshifter to zero zero you may have Evil Twin ETB as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it gains a blue and a black tap. Destroy target creature with the same name as this creature. It's. I'd argue in that art, which one was the more evil one? I don't it's, know. it's hard to say. Um, but I will say this much. It is good removal, and it's fun because you can kind of uh, politic with it, right? You know, like, you play something cool. You can politic with it. I'm terrible uh, at it. I, I try, but then... It just doesn't work because my board gets wiped. But if that happens, you have stuff like Extract from Darkness, three of blue and a black for a sorcery. Each player mills two cards, so this can help us in our game plan. Then you put a creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Notice it says a graveyard, so someone mills a graveyard. Yeah, someone yeah. mills something with the hotness. It's now your hotness and your hotness. <laughs> And we're just sharing the wealth, you know? That's really what this deck is about. Group loving. Yeah. Um, no card... Oh, that's that's why you go into Demir and Soul type. Yeah. Group, group no card love. better represents group love than filth. It's three and a black for a 2-2 two, two incarnation. It has Swamp Walk. As long as filth is in your graveyard and you control a swamp, your creatures or creatures you control have Swamp Walk. Um, this... Before I met my wife... This card described me to a T, and then she cleaned me up. Hey, you know that's what that's what wives are for. They make us better people. Shout out to my stinky wife. Agreed. Um, <laughs> so this is the evasion I was hinting at earlier when I was burying the lead. Filth will almost always be in our graveyard. I will find some way to make sure it goes into our graveyard, and we will have swamp walk because. Uh, Spoilers, we are playing Urborg. Not Cabal Coffers, just Urborg. Um, another guy that's often... Good good of you. That's that's actually, you know what? That's that's very noble of you. Uh, Cabal Coffers just isn't needed. We're already playing the best color in Magic. We're in black. Like, why would I need Cabal Coffers? It just seems like win more, you know? Same reason why I would need a $500 Legends Legendary. No, uh, sorry. <clears throat> You, you go ahead. You uh, go ahead. Next guy on our list is Geth, Lord of the Vault. Four black black for a legendary creature zombie. It's a 5-5 five, five with Intimidate. You can pay X in a black. Put target artifact or creature card with converted mana cost X from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Tap. Then that player mills X cards. So this is nice when uh, with Osgear running around so much. Yeah, go ahead and put that Mycosynth Lattice. Go ahead and put that dark still forge into the graveyard i'm i'm gonna rip it from you 
And they have to do it at sorcery speed. We're doing it at instant speed. Instant speed. Heck yeah. Yeah, got the sweet. Okay. All right. I I can see. Yeah. Oh, buddy. I wouldn't have come up with this, but I can see where you're going with this. And it's it's pretty decent. Oh, design. man. We still got so much sweet stuff. Like Ghoul Caller's Bell. It's one for an artifact. You tap. Each player puts a top card of his or her library in his or her graveyard. I really wish I could have found some more. I could have found some threshold cards to really take advantage of our graveyard being full. But we have a lot of things to abuse without needing threshold. And this also just gets us more stuff in our opponent's graveyard. We're not trying to mill people out. We're literally trying to take the best stuff from them. Yeah, the reason I said, oof, that's a one drop. And you can pop that right away. That's not too shabby. Not at all. That's that common? Uh, yeah, from Innistrad. Innistrad was a great set. Um, no doubt. Next card, and I'm calling it by its proper name, which is Gigan Cyberclaw Terror. It's four. Its proper name. It's its proper name. <laughs> Gigan's my favorite kaiju. Um, so it's four hybrid Demir Demir. It's a legendary creature, Demon Kraken. It's a six six. It has companion. We're not doing that. When Gigan enters the battlefield, each a player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard, and um. You can wait. Yeah, put a creature card <laughs> with even C and C from among them onto the battlefield under your control. So this hits our stuff. This hits their stuff. Once again, if we have something cool, it goes in. If they have something cool, it goes in instead. It goes in. Yeah. We can also make copies of guy again. <laughs> there's there's a lot of stuff. Disgusting. That's disgusting. Um, modern All Star until it got banned. Lantern of Insight, one. What's modern? It it's um, I'm told it's a good format. I don't know, but Lantern of Insight was in it and it was really cool. We're not using it that way because this is Commander. Uh, it's one for an artifact. <laughs> Each player plays with the top card of his or her library revealed, then tap sacrifice Lantern of Insight. Uh, target player shuffles his or her library. So we're playing this so that we know what a person has on top of their library so we can not only see what we have and can kind of help set up if we have tutors or we're playing fetch lands but we can also see what other people are doing so if we want to specifically target someone with like codex shredder or something like that to set up for big plays or just be proactive knowing oh man i need to hold back this like negate or a counter spell or something like that See, I like this because with my bias, like I had no idea that this was a modern all star. Oh yeah, it. I just think it's a cool commander card, dude. Lane, it was a whole thing. I don't even know how to break it with the format with uh, <laughs> what is it? Four of each card. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I just I wouldn't even know. It what was to a do. wild deck. It was very very complex. Like you not only had to know how to play the deck, but as your opponent, the opponent had to know when they lost because you could. Oh. Because it became a time thing. If you didn't know when it got too far in, you would actually just lose uh, both matches because you didn't have enough time to play the second match or your third match. It was very, it was very complex. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll stick to one of. I'll stick to the commander format. Thanks. Yeah, and if I got any of that wrong, which I don't think I did, but if I did, don't be too harsh on me. I just play commander. There's no modern players <laughs> listening. Uh, well, you never know. Um, so we, we're moving on to, if you are, don't No, please. Don't. We're moving on to some of my favorite creatures in the next two, which is Lazav Demir mastermind two blue, two black, uh, legendary creature shapeshifter. It's a three, three with hex proof. Whenever a creature card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you may have Lazav Demir mastermind become a, anywhere. yes, anywhere, become a copy of that card, except its name is Lazav Demir. Yeah, Lazav Demir Mastermind. It's legendary in addition to its other types, and it has hexproof and this ability. Lazav is insane. I've built Lazav Demir Mastermind, Lazav the Multi Furious, and both those decks are so much fun. Putting Lazav into a shell like this, where you can constantly guarantee someone's stuff is going into the graveyard, and you have stuff like Lantern and of Insight to really take advantage of like knowing what Lazav is going to become, it's sweet. Ooh, yeah. And speaking of the other Lazav. Lazav the Multi Furious. <laughs> Blue and a black for, you guessed it, a legendary creature shapeshifter 1 3. No. Yep. 
Uh, when this is off, ETBs, you get to surveil one. So you look at the top card of your library, you can leave it on top or put it into your graveyard. Then you can pay X and resolve the multi-furious becomes a copy of target creature card in your graveyard with CMC X, except its name is Lazav the multi Furious. It's legendary in addition to its other types, and it has this ability. So, once again, if we want to do some like cheeky stuff, we can Real we can pump our graveyard full of our cool cards and just have Lazav turn into those at different stages, whether it be during the declared attackers or blockers. Like, Lazav is sweet. If you haven't played one before, you should definitely look into building one of those two decks. No. And if you don't want to build a Lazav, but you still want to play probably the gnarliest, <laughs> in my opinion, Demir card. Ye uh, Mind Grind. <laughs> you oh. can play it in this deck. Uh, I will say that oh. I've had a game where I was playing Lazav Demir Mastermind, and someone I made someone mil, mil a... Um, uh, what's his name? The card that triples your mana. Forgotten Ancient? No, not Forgotten Ancient. Um, For uh, I can't think of his name. It's the green guy. Whatever. Nyx Bloom Ancient from the Void. Nyx Bloom Ancient. I had someone mill a Nyx Bloom Ancient, and I had Mind Grain in hand, and <laughs> guess who milled out the table? this guy <laughs> so uh mind grind x blue to black for a sorcery each opponent reveals cards from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals x land cards then puts all cards revealed this way into his or her graveyard x can't be zero thanks for the save uh director Brian. yes unfortunately he uh had to help with that alley -oop, but you know what a w is a w Next card is Mind Crank, two for an artifact. Whenever an opponent loses life, that player puts that many cards from the top of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So what's nice is, is this is just life loss. It doesn't mean combat damage has to be dealt or you have to deal damage to someone. You could easily have your opponents doing damage to each other, causing them to mill, or they can simply crack a fetch land or shock in a land. If Mind Crank is on the battlefield, they're, they're milling cards disgusting um this card probably isn't necessary but when i get to play it i like to it's mirror gallery it's five <laughs> for an artifact and it says the legend rule doesn't apply now granted doesn't apply this is symmetrical so it hits the entire board which causes a very fun like calls for very wild i guess i should say commander games because if anyone's playing clones such as gets nutty but for us it allows us to make our clones like bigger meaner creatures but we can also be doing silly stuff like giving having two gets and being able to get in with a bunch more damage or playing a second guy gain off something something weird that's what we're trying to do Weird's good. um so i put in some of the lands that are specific to my deck so morphic pool it's just good uh don't really need to go over that i will talk about necromancy though because that is my jam it's soon a black for an enchantment. There is a lot of text. Just because <laughs> he's the necromancer with all the answers. Yes. Uh, just know you can play necromancy at as an instant, but you sacrifice a creature at the end of the turn. Otherwise, um, you can put a creature card from any graveyard onto the battlefield, and it's tapped. And you have to pay to untap it. It's not. It's a whole thing. It's good. And no art has haunted me. More I think that's a shrunken head. I know it's not, but it feels like it, right? It's it's already into my soul. I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore. It's just it's touch it's tapping my brain, eating at my soul fire. Mm -hmm. Sc just scroll scroll down. No, I, I want you to stare into down. its eyes. Let's see if it tells us all the answers. Do I know you? Have we have we played this? You you'll have to you'll have to see those terrible terrible answers uh, <laughs> when, when my deck list right. comes up. Oh um yeah, and this creature doesn't come the into play tapped. <laughs> I said that I'm thinking of a different card. It doesn't. It'll all come in. Um, Overgrown Tomb. It's in our colors. Moving on. Rise of the Dark Realms. We've been spending all game milling people, putting crap into graveyards. Guess what? We're gonna cast Rise of the Dark Realms for nine mana, two of which black, seven of it, whatever color you want. Put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. 
this is what you want to do in Commander. You want to play big, splashy spells and make your friends furious because they didn't do anything to stop you. No, I don't know how you'd be able to pop that off in a game of Jumpstart, like if you were to actually draft it, but it's still, I would, it's still sweet. Dude, I would have drafted it. I wouldn't have cared. I don't really know, but I would have done it. I probably would have lost <laughs> to everyone who pulled an Allosaurus Shepherd because that's probably how those games went. I pulled three of those <laughs> and a Creator Hoof. Um, Some I did cards. something similar. But it was with Bruvax and uh, Branch and Evolution and something else. Uh, next reanimation creature is Sepulchral uh, Primordial. It's five black black for an avatar. It has Intimidate, good evasion. It's a five four. And when it ETBs, for each opponent, you may put up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. That's We're good. just reanimating. Really We've been doing it. Might as well keep doing it. Um. This, I think Sword of Body and Mind is kind of one of the more underrated swords as well, but it does what we want to do. It gives us protection from two colors. It's a three-drop artifact. Um, it equips for two. Your equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from green and blue. Whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you create a two-two green wolf. That's not why it's in the deck. That player mills ten cards. That's why it's in the deck. That's why. That's why. You just... You want to hit it, man, you know? Um, Siphon Mine is three and a black for a sorcery. Each other player discards a card. You draw a card for each card discarded this way. It's just a good card. You can't make people mill stuff if it's in, the, if it's in their hands, but you can make them discard stuff. True. Sir Conrad the Grim just kind of feels like this is his home. A uh, deck like this. And with Minecraft. <laughs> Yeah, just, that's just gross. It's three you black black for a legendary creature, human knight, five four. Whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature card leaves <laughs> your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. Then you pay one to black. Each player mills a card. So yeah, mind crank triggers is rough. Um, if we have Hall of Mirror, if we have Hall of Mirror out, or what I say was Mirror Gallery, I mean and Mirror gallery. we make copies of this guy it just gets to be a very bad time for anyone who isn't you and that's what we're here for more lands we have undergrowth stadium just a another good one urborg tomb of yogmoth so we can get ensure that our creatures have swamp walk uh, this card's really sweet. I don't get to play with it very often. It's Volrath the Fallen. It's three and triple back for a legend. I want to say he's shapeshifter now, but I'm not entirely sure. I think so. I think he is. Um, Either way, this card slaps. Yeah, he's a 6-4. You can pay one to black. Discard a creature card from your hand. Volrath the Fallen gets plus X plus X until the end of the turn where X is the discarded card's CMC. So this guy is in here to be able to legitimately slap people we have a bunch of high cmc cards well specifically uh oh no yeah it's just yeah it has to be creature whatever we have a bunch of high cmc creature yeah. cards which perfectly fine but we also want to be able to get cards into our graveyard to cheat them out so volrath allows that to happen and he's a big old body big old body six four yeah and that's before all the cool yeah. stuff. And he'll have Swamp Walk. Uh, speaking of Swamp, Gross. we have a Watery Grave. <laughs> then we have Whetstone. It's three for an artifact. You pay three. Each player... I've never heard of this card uh, before. Right? It's sweet. You pay three. Each player puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. We're milling them. We're doing it. We're I'm not trying to mill you out. I'm just We're trying to milling. take your stuff. <laughs> Is that your table politics? Is yeah, that... <laughs> you can't be mad at you can't hey, be listen. look. You can't <laughs> not trying to mill you. <laughs> you can't say I'm milling you out because that's not true. I'm just milling you some so I can take your stuff. If you're dead, I don't have your stuff anymore. So what would milling you out do for me? I'm just trying to get to your good stuff. I'm sold right yeah. there. I'm just trying to get to your you good stuff. You, you, you won me over. Yeah. So that I can play with it. Huh. I think there's a voice from beyond said something about bad politics, but they don't have a voice, so they don't matter. Um, next card, 
is <laughs> Whisper Steel Dagger. It's two and a black for an equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two plus O. Oh. Whenever a crypt creature deals combat damage to a player, you may cast a creature sp- cast a creature spell. That's weird. That's weirded that way. Cast a creature spell from that player's graveyard this turn. You may spend mana as though or any color to cast that spell and it equips for three. This is just another cool way to reanimate stuff. So if we can't guarantee it from the 20 billion reanimate spells that I have in this deck, this one is a more surefire way I feel like to do it. And it's a little bit more flashy. Um, the final card on my side of the deck is just a Zagoth Triumph. So it's in our colors. There's no reason not to play it. So that is my version of the deck. We are milling to reanimate and clone. That, uh, yeah. You know, and that's that's typically uh, what I'd expect coming out of you, Mr. Uh reanimate clone and uh unearth you know the i think let's see how many unearth cards are there how many clone cards are there yeah that's completely <laughs> that's you in a i'm nutshell. a simple man now um so i built with white and either i'm incredibly stupid or this is a masterpiece. Well, it's a <laughs> this flip. first card already... <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's a coin flip. So, <laughs> uh, I like to combo off. And <laughs> with the stipulation of it having to have white... Uh, I don't like again. I don't build with white, so I was very limited. So I went with comboing off with colorless <laughs> as my theme here. <laughs> uh, so the the way my deck works is either I'm going to cast um, prismatic piper a ton and build up a storm count, or to hurt you or mill you or. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Here, let's just, let's just twinsies. get into it. Twinsies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, first card I got on there is Altar of Dementia. Uh, so, two colorless artifact. You sacrifice a creature and target player puts a number of cards equal to that, <laughs> that uh, creature's power into their graveyard phenomenal and i guess you know like it would look like i'm kind of leaning zach's way but that's that's not the case here i love it already the i don't even i went so many different ways okay so (laughs) this it's gonna be all out of order uh i'm going alphabetical here to give you a just and i'll try to tie in as much as i can but this is white storm Exalted and combo. So what you're saying, so, your deck is very your uh, version of the deck is very resilient, resilient and has many lines of play. Is what yes. I'm hearing. Yes. Well, you know, if you want to make me sound smart like that, I'm all for it. <laughs> hey, buddy, you're a smart guy. So the uh, to get off <laughs> with the uh, Voltron, ask the exalted. Uh, we have angelic benediction. That is three colorless and a white exalted. Whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn. And whenever a creature you control attacks alone, you may tap target creature. I don't care about that second part. I'm sure it's going to come in handy. Um, I just want that plus one, plus one. That's fair. Yeah, it's fair. Ashnod's Mm. Altar um, ties into the infinite mana that I'm going to try to create. It's also just a good sack outlet. Uh, Three colorless. You sacrifice a creature. You add two colorless to your mana pool. Great. I don't think... Excuse me, I don't think enough people play just sack outlets in their deck. Even if your deck isn't about graveyard recursion, just being able to m- ensure that 
someone isn't exiling your stuff. Just a sack outlet's good to have. The, <laughs> the next... God, my deck's so dumb. The next card I have here is a Sure to Assemble. Now, I'm going to have to cock my head <laughs> left because, you know, I'm never going to put a card like this in there again because I don't want to read sideways like this anymore. A Sure is... Uh, <laughs> hybrid, uh, Celestia, put a 1-1... One, one, counter on target creature and then that creature becomes indestructible until end of turn so i'm trying to protect uh prismatic piper because why go after thrasios when you have an unstoppable force such as prismatic piper on the field mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you got to protect piper uh the other half of that i guess relevant you assemble four colorosa green and white and you get to create a couple of uh two two green creature tokens was Vigi. But we're in it more for the... Uh, With sorry? Vigilance. With Vigilance, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. We want yeah. to... Again, I, I had to stay in the confines of white and get fancy with it. You could use the other thing for blockers. Sure. Uh, this next card. <laughs> this next card. I'm sure no one has heard of this I card. Haven't. It's the white storm card. Astral steel two colorless and a white target creature gets plus one plus two until end of turn storm <laughs> <laughs> so the game plan here is we're gonna loop we're gonna try to cast piper infinite times and the we're gonna try to put some boots on it and we're gonna swing for a lot <laughs> We're going to swing for the kill. Is the goal to swing with so um, much damage that it just inherently kills the rest of the table? So you, you swing, and then you could also, if you have uh, Altar of Dementia out, <laughs> you, can, yeah. you can swing, kill one person, and then you can mill them. Uh, anyway, it's, it's arguably the best Storm card uh, in the color pie. Up next, we have some color fixing for me. Uh, Avacyn's Pilgrim, just a green for a creature human monk, and you tap it to add a white to your mana pool. Uh, more cards I regret putting in. Um, these, yeah, these fuse cards. Uh, okay. Though this one's pretty relevant. With me trying to cast Piper uh, infinite amount of times, you have Beck and Call. Beck is a green and a blue uh whenever a creature card enters the battlefield this turn you can draw a card uh the only reason why i was able to put that card in this deck is because the white on call which is four colorless a white and a blue and you get to put four one one white bird tokens with flying onto the battlefield so again we're gonna try to draw our whole deck here uh, you know you gotta you gotta draw that storm card you gotta dig right down <laughs> to get to get your uh, your your finisher. <laughs> oh, um, God, never never building with white again. This is a sweet card. This one, this one's not bad. Benevolent bodyguard costs a white human cleric. Um, I needed some sort of evasion. Um, I didn't want to rely just on artifacts. Um, I wanted to get as creative as possible make white worth it to put in uh so this guy is sacrifice him and you get target creature gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn so once you've storm counted ten thousand and you have your astral steel and your prismatic piper is um i guess a thousand and five thousand and seven because of that plus two on the back there um you're gonna want a little evasion uh, Boreal Druid, I'll start because I only care about casting <laughs> Prismatic Piper, so I don't need a color. Add one colorless to your mana pool. Perfect. Cathedral of War is one of the lands I have here, and that is because it enters the battlefield tapped. No, it's because <laughs> it has the word exalted on there. You tap it for a colorless, perfect, but it's exalted. We're buffing up. We're buffing up Prismatic Piper. 
even if we can't storm off, we're he's gonna be fit. Someone, yeah, someone he's, could easily he's, die. It's, it's gonna be. Someone fit. could easily die to commander damage. Oh, that's what we're going for. That's one of the lines. Uh, now Derevi. Drevi Imperial Tactician is in this deck. Uh, green, white, and a blue. Um, he's fine. He's a bird wizard. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, you get to... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just laughing about my dumb combo lines here. Uh, when he enters the battlefield or you deal damage to a creature, you get to a tap or untap target permanent. So, Drevi... Um, Eldrazi Displacer, which I'll get into there afterwards, and Emil uh, the Blessed. These are uh, part of the combo to create infinite colorless mana in order to cast Prismatic Piper as many times. So the line that you would want with this one would be Eldrazi Displacer, Derevi, and Scorched. Uh, what is that card now? I can't think of it because... Scorched Ruins. Okay. So we heard Derevi, Eldrazi Displacer, um, two colorless and a white. Devoid, it has no color. I love Devoid. It's friends with Piper, I'm sure. Uh, and then two colorless, sorry, two generic and a colorless, and you get to exile another target creature and then return it to the battlefield tapped under your control. So Derevi is going to leave. It's going to come back in, and we get to untapped. Uh, scorched ruins over and over which gains us infinite colorless mana uh, Eldrazi Displacer can be replaced of course with Emil the Blessed which is two colorless white white um, it has the ability of th three colorless exile target creature you control and bring it back to the battlefield under your control um, the other ability I'm not too worried about it but I got a Gucci now because I pulled a Zach with all this crazy Oracle text. <laughs> uh, whenever a creature is just the battlefield under your control, you can pay uh, Celestia Hybrid. If you do, put a 1 1 counter on it. And if it's a unicorn, you get to do more fun things instead. Uh, now, my pile, if you're going to put my 30 cards in, it does say that it's 784 US. And I have to skip ahead a little bit here. Uh, the reason why it's so pricey is because the other way to create infinite mana is with uh, Rasputin, the Dreamweaver. Uh, he is from Legends. Now, A Tale from the Pit, actually. A Tale from the Pit. Um, Mark Rosewater recently posted about how there's not a whole lot of Dreamweaving going on these days. So... Uh, Rasputin Dreamweaver actually is rebranding and he's going to be Rasputin the self-esteem. <laughs> right, so like, I was just like, Oh, self-esteem. Like, that's great. Like maybe I can give him a chance in this deck. Uh, now this, this has really small font. So bear with me here, guys. Uh, so yeah, four colors, the white and the blue, uh, when he comes in, put seven counters on him. Uh, you may remove one of those counters to prevent a damage or to add one colorless to your mana pool. Uh, play this ability as an interrupt. Uh, and then put one or more, sorry, uh, put one or more counters on during your upkeep um, and he'll tap, essentially. Uh, it's a lot of janky font afterwards, but with... Eldrazi Displacer or Emil, you're just going to keep popping off that infinite mana. So you're going to bring him in. You're going to take four counters off him. You're going to net that one colorless, and you're going to be able to bounce him again with uh, the uh, bounce abilities of Emil or Eldrazi Displacer. <laughs> so that we can, again, cast, <laughs> cast Piper as many times as we want to alter to Dementia, or to build up a storm count, um, no matter what way you go with this. Uh, <laughs> whatever line you choose, I'm sure you'll have a blast. Um, or again, you could just be thinking I'm crazy. I, I have a thought about your your pile at the end, so remind me, because it, it's actually a compliment, but I want you to keep talking no, about okay. your birds. Uh, well, Zach, 
if you compliment me at the end of this, that'll be my finest hour. <laughs> also, in this deck, uh, finest hour. Two colorless and banned green, white, and blue. Uh, it's an enchantment, and it says exalted. Crazy. Crazy. Whenever a creature you control attacks alone, if it's the first combat phase, untap that creature. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. Piper is getting in. Easily. Easily. And to help him even further, we have Forsaken Monument, five colorless, legendary artifact. Colorless creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Fear the Piper. Whenever you tap a permanent four colorless, you get to add another colorless. Hey, hey, Burial Druid. How's it going, bud? Look at that. You tap for two. Moving on up. Whenever you cast a colorless spell, you gain two life. Is that us? Is that us? Do we just get to gain infinite life? I think so. It sure seems that way. Bonkers. Bonkers. You could do that. There's a fourth line. I didn't even read that last part. I just got excited about pumping him up. You can, we can gain infinite life. That's dope. <laughs> All right, moving on. I'm, I'm even more excited about my own build now. <laughs> Giver of runes for one white. Um, again, needed some dumb evasion. Uh, hopefully this uh, core clear give, gives it to us. Uh, you tap it, and another target creature you control gains protection from colorless or from the color of your choice. Simple enough. Um, the all-star, my ramp, and my exalted champ, uh, Noble Hierarch for a green. It's got exalted, and you can tap it for a green, white, or blue. I think it's the most expensive one-cost mana dork. Yeah. I think so. I think so, yeah. But, you know, which could be very hard to purchase after you've spent 400 to $500 on a Rasputin Green. <laughs> uh, up next, we have <laughs> Phyrexian Altar. I just needed another sack outlet. Uh, again, we're just trying to loop Piper. Also, what Zach was talking about before, just having stack outlets. Um, in general, is good no matter what the deck. Mm -hmm. uh, Quazili Pride Mage. Up next, Cat Wizard, not relevant. <laughs> uh, green, because <laughs> a green and a white. Um, exalted. And if you pay one and you sacrifice it, you get to destroy target artifact or enchantment. We could, or we could keep it around to, you know, just have that plus one keep stacking. Get exalted triggers. I, you know, I'm not counting, but I have been counting. I think. Prismatic Piper with all of them that is like plus six right now. Uh, Rafik of the Many will keep on that Exalted Train. Now, uh, I hate this card when it's a commander. I love this card in my list. Uh, it's <laughs> one colorless, green, white, and a blue for a 3-3 three, three legendary creature, Human Knight. Not relevant. Um, whenever a creature you control attacks alone, it gains double strike until end of turn. So not only is our Piper thick, he's also swinging for dubs. Dubs. Swinging for dubs. Uh, so skipping Rasputin on the list here, we have Safi, Eric's daughter. Uh, the reason why I have Safi in here um, is with Benevolent, uh, Bodyguard, and a couple other cards I'm about to mention. Uh they go to the graveyard, like you have to sack them to get that evasion. So we have Safi to get them back um, the best way we can, being limited to uh, white and with my limited knowledge of white. Um, this this deck took a lot out of my books. <laughs> like this, like, like I'm drained. Um, so yeah, <laughs> sacrifice uh, Safi Eric's daughter. Uh, when target creature is put in the graveyard, this turn return it to the battlefield. So you yeet Safi and you get your... <laughs> yeet Safi, I love that. Yeet, yeet Safi. Um, so one of those cards that you're going to yeet her for is Selfless Savior. Um, one white mana for a creature dog. Maybe relevant? Stay tuned. <laughs> it's, not. <laughs> it's not. It's <laughs> not. Don't spoil... <clears throat> 
Uh, sacrifice it, and another target creature you control gains indestructible till end of turn. So again, we're just protecting that pipe. <laughs> protecting that pipe. Uh, same with self of spirit for uh, colorless and a white uh, creature spirit cleric. Not relevant. F- <laughs> Flying. Uh, you sacrifice it, and creatures you control gain indestructible till end of turn. So that one's even more nice. Get to keep all your stuff. Thanks, Selfless Spirit. Uh, we have probably the, you know, I'm going to say, you know, I already said that Piper's thick. Uh, now we have Shield Mate here. You sacrifice him. He costs one white. Uh, he, for a soldier, you sacrifice him. And target creature gets a big old behind. Gets plus zero, plus four until end of turn. Because sometimes you just have to have the bigger butt when you're, you know, when you're swinging <laughs> so that Piper doesn't die. Uh, to go with the whole Safi thing I talked about, we have Sun Titan. Um, four colorless and two white for a creature giant. It's got Vigilance. It's a 6-6. Six, six. So 6-6 six, six for 6 with Vig. Fantastic. And uh, whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you get to return a card with converted mana cost. Uh, sorry, with mana value. Oh, my God. They, they did. It. It's the most recent printing. I didn't even think about that. <clears throat> Ew. Uh, with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, uh, Safi, Self of Spirit, Self of Savior, Benevolent Bodyguard, all these things go into the bin. Let's get them back. Uh, lastly, we have um, another card that I'm going to have to break my neck to read. Self note that's three this turn, this, to <laughs> this list, and I'll never do that again. No more. No more. Okay, hold on. Sorry if you hear a crack, folks. I keep clicking my uh, mouse. I don't need to. <laughs> so supply, is it supply and demand? Yeah, supply and demand. Supply. It's a, a green, a white, and X. You can put X, one, one, green sap balloon creature tokens into play. Sure. Build, build up a wall. Sure. But we want demand. <laughs> we demand demand. Uh, you can search your library for a multicolored card. Reveal that and put it into your hand. Um, with that, we're going to want to grab Rasputin. Um, like, we could grab Derevi or whatever, but again, Rasputin, um, $500 card. We're, we're going to flex. <laughs> so you, <laughs> Not here to right, yeah. So not you, here to make good choices. Yeah, you could grab Rafik. You could grab Rafik. You can like. There's plenty of good multicolored cards in here, but we're gonna flex. I don't even care if it's a proxy. You're gonna flex with a five hundred dollar uh, U.S. Rasputin. Uh, Speaking of good multicolored <laughs> lastly, cards, yeah, Wargate, green, white, blue, and X. Search your library for a permanent card with converted mana cost. X or less and put it into play into play and then you shuffle your library i love the alara block i so hopefully we go back i so hope we go back to alara oh definitely um you know what i'm i yeah i'd be looking for uh some gnarly shards if that was <laughs> yeah. the case so what i wanted to compliment you on is that your version of the deck reminds me a lot of um like a food chain combo list without food chain <laughs> without food chain <laughs> i thought that was, that was just really neat um here it is i did something like really goofy and you kept telling me this whole time like oh my deck's goofy my deck's goofy and then it's like it seems very resilient and very just like ah you're either gonna die or you're gonna die or you're gonna die it's gonna be with a smile but but hot damn, it's going to be fun. I like it, the, I don't build with white. I think the last thing I built with white was a precon I bought that I upgraded two cards in. Um, so, and I don't even think those cards were white. I think it was the Mardu uh, humans. <laughs> I don't even think I added white cards to it. So oh, it's geez. been a while. Um, so we're going to quickly go over what um, cards are in both decks. So we've already talked about Alter of Brood. I don't know why it's here and here, but there's no red. It's very confusing. So we're just not going to talk about that. Alter of the Brood is in both decks. Um, Assault Suit (laughs) 
is also in both decks. It's four for an uh, equipment. Equip creature gets plus two, plus two, has haste, can't attack you, or a planeswalker you control and can't be sacrificed. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, you may have that player gain control of the equipped creature until the end of turn. If you do on tap it, it equips for three. Um, oh, speaking of both decks, are you going to be playing Thrasios? Uh, no. When you play? No, yeah, no. me either. Just Piper. Just yes. Piper. Okay, good. I thought, okay, I'm glad we're... It's, sim- it's, uh... I'm, I'm glad we have the, you know, we can meet in the middle on that. It's too. Piper Saltai for me. Thrasios trash card. Yeah. Um, yeah. um, duplicate was also in both of our lists as it's just for Benson it was a good colorless source and for me it's a shapeshifter but the big thing is that it's amazing removal exiling and colorless with a body that gets bigger depending on the, the size of the creature amazing um, eternal witness is great not every green deck needs it but for um I'd argue. I'd argue that. I think every green deck needs it. It if you if you have a green deck and you don't have an eternal witness. Uh, no, it's in every green deck. <laughs> uh, this is this Disagree. is good for both of us. Um, for the simple fact that like if one of Benson's combo pieces or something he needs is in the grave, he can get it back. This is good for me if I want to recast one of my sorceries that I don't have access to. Like I'm able to recast creatures, no problem. But being able to replay a mind crank or replay a mind's des- uh, not mind's desire <laughs> mind grind is kind of impossible <laughs> without something like this. Yeah. Oh, and then all of the cards, of course, in the both deck slot, um, they're just green and blue mm-hmm. to abide by. Um, us being able to switch in and out our piles exactly so so don't you know don't be like, oh hey they should have put this black card in nope that's not uh we can't do um, that stipulation and this will also flow into our ramp our card draw and our interaction um, expedition map is there so that we can get either scorch ruins for benson or urborg for me we want to be able to get these um, lands specifically because they help continue and further along our game plan Helm of the Host, um, <laughs> more Pipers is good Pipers. More any of what I have is always good. Five. Piper needs a Helm. He's that face. He's not. He's not winning any uh, um, pageants. He needs that. Five helm. consuming aberrations seems fine. So that's where I'm at with life. Um, propaganda for me. Uh, being able to impede people from swinging in because they're going to be very, very annoyed with what I'm doing is great. And um, I think Benson's kind of on the same route, right? Yeah. Well, I think they're going to think I have like just a hot mess of a pile until uh, it's too late. Yeah, and we want to make sure by the time it's too late, they can't do anything. Next on the list, we have... Oh, no, we've already went over propaganda. Uh, We're on Rogue's Passage. So... Rogue's Passage is huge in both of our lists. This guarantees Benson kills with Piper. And this gar- oh, this yeah. guarantees for me that I'm either reanimating something or just hurting someone. Which, I mean, that's equally as fine. Um, the final card that we featured in both of our lists was uh, Swiftfoot Boots. It's pretty self-explanatory. Oh, you gotta get those yeah. boots. Hey, yeah. Haste and Hexproof. You just need it. Um, if I'm if I'm at storm count two thousand three hundred and negative nine and I give him astral steel and I can't attack with him, there's no point. I if I have Ultra of Dementia out, sure. Yeah. Right. Uh but there's no point, so I gotta have them boots. I gotta put those boots on the piper and you know, just swing uh joyfully at brian director brian yes director brian uh we were saying we're swinging at you directly all right so the <laughs> uh we're moving into ramp now so i'm just gonna name the card and benson's gonna say what it does so uh arcane signet two colorless taps for one man in your commander's identity Bop. It's got flying. It's a zero one. Taps for one man of any color. Crop rotation. 
you sacrifice a land, you get to search for a land and put that into the battlefield. Cultivate. Pay three, put one into your hand, one onto the battlefield. Elvish Mystic. Cute little elf, taps for a green. Farsi. <laughs> Colorless and a green, and you get to search for a plains, island, swamp, mountain, and put it on the battlefield. Very relevant. Works for both. Yes, cards. Fantastic very well. Card. Uh, Fellworks turn. Tap for a color that your opponent has. Kodama's Reach. Already explained it with Cultivate. Different name, same game. Rampant Growth. Like far seek, but worse. Because eh. uh, <laughs> you can only. All it's right. just no, we were good. Soaring. <laughs> Pay one, tap for two, play it on turn one, gain enemies for life. Um, our interactions also pretty straightforward. Uh, acidic slime, death touch you two for five. When an ETB destroy a target artifact, enchantment or land, beast within, destroy a target permanent, they get a beast. Counter spell, just counter spell. Fierce guardianship is free if we have our commander and counter target not creature spell. Imprisoned in the moon, just to be obnoxious. Mana to be obnoxious. Yeah. Mana drain because it's mana drain. Um, you counter a spell, you gain mana equal to its CMC. Reclamation sage, smaller version of acidic slime, essentially. Yeah. Song of dryads. Um, just to be obnoxious too. I love this <laughs> electric card. boogaloo. I love this card. Oh hey, your your uh, commander is the deck's main focus. You don't really stray from like not having him on the battlefield. Well, he's a tree now. Yes, and uh, yes. void slime. The only one I feel like is really worth reading. <laughs> Counter target spell activated ability or triggered ability. Green blue blue. Green blue blue. Pretty uh pretty solid, and our card draw. Also, uh, I'd say pretty straightforward. Beast Whisper, whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card for four. Factor Fiction, so you can really... Con I love this card. In a game of Commander, this card's just great. Yeah. Again, not good at politics, but I like... If anybody's kind of leaning your way, you, you pick them. And I I usually give a five and oh. <laughs> I either make the... Like, if, if they don't have... Uh, like a Rel Cory Tower or anything to keep their hand. I give them a 5-0. and oh. uh, That way, I guess they can just kind of pick and choose what they want, discard the rest, and I stay on their good side. Um, one of my favorite things to do is watch people try to resolve Factor Fiction and decide, like, how to split the piles. It's a very... It, it's fun. Factor Fictions are crazy. Um, Frantic Search, you draw two, discard two, untap three lands, and it's a uh, three instant... Guardian projects yeah. and enchantment whenever non token creature ETBs um, under your control. If it doesn't have the same name as a creature you control, you. Or in your graveyard. Yeah, I don't like that. Or you draw a card. When, uh, when this card came out, I completely skipped over it. I didn't even know it was part of the set. And then Han, <laughs> who's on uh, Brunette Live mostly with Lotus, is just like, why isn't this in your deck? And he showed me the card and. <laughs> so good uh mole drifter typically good in any blue deck uh you pay three you draw two and then uh it dies nice. Ristic study and uh, would you like to pay one sylvan library opponent cast a spell. <laughs> that's <laughs> draw a card unless that player plays that's one. how i feel about that card uh sylvan yeah. sylvan library is sweet it's one no green for an enchantment at the beginning of your draw step, you draw two, and if you decide to keep them, you lose four life for each of those cards. Oh, you know we're losing eight life. We don't care. Uh, yeah, no care. We're going. Yeah, we're going for. I it. will specifically keep two, not play anything to discard, so I can have effects. I have done that. It is sweet. It's a very uh, look at me, king of castle type move. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Urban Evolution, three green and blue, sorcery, draw three, you can play an additional land. Just seems pretty cool. Boom. Oh, and even though uh, not relevant, the card is absolute trash. I know we skipped over um, what he actually does, but Thrasios, the garbage hero, green and a blue, 
uh, legendary creature, Merfolk Wizard. Um, you pay for a colorless. You get to scry one, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land, you put it on the battlefield. If not, you put it into your uh, your hand. We're not. But trash card, don't play it. We're literally here to use its colors. Um, so j- just yeah. like they do in CDH. And I don't own a copy of Kaidel. Yeah. So. Kaidel would be sweet. Yeah. All right, um, our lands. I think we went over anything that was relevant to our deck. Everything else, um, just our what we would assume would be typical. You know, nothing too yeah. crazy. Ash Barons, Blighted Woodland, Breeding Pool, Command Tower, Evolving Wilds, Exotic Orchard, Fabled Passage, uh, Five Forests, Five Islands, One Myrad Landscape. A rejuvenating springs. Um, if you're putting Zax list in, you're going to do eight swamps. If you're putting mine in, you're going to do eight plains and a terramorphic expanse. And if you put a terramorphic expanse in here and it is not the jumpstart rainbow terramorphic expanse, then don't talk to me. Um, Dan Scott is one of my favorite artists, so it will always be this terramorphic expanse. And that's why we split our decks in half. That's that's perfectly fine. He did reform. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Name a stronger card than reform. That's what I thought. So that was uh, this week's episode of Parallel Thoughts. Um, it was a doozy. We've been wanting to do this one for a while, and I'm glad we finally got to bang it out. Um, Benson, I, I really like your list. I wasn't... Ex- like I had no clue what you were going to do. And when you sent me the cards to put this together, I was still very unsure of what you were trying to do. I saw exalted and was like, okay, he's just going to try to kill people. And then I saw everything else. And I was like, maybe, maybe he's just going to, I don't know, <laughs> but this is sweet. I really like it. Um, I'd be curious to see how this yes. actually plays. I know you don't build white decks, but this would be one I would, love to see him paper and play against you. <laughs> um I I I like the idea mm-hmm. of this deck. I like of my deck. Um I really like yours. Um <laughs> Sultai and Reanimator and Clone it's like it's not my fault. Oh, I if <laughs> um, it's so, like I I like what I see. I wouldn't have been able to pull off the same it's me in a nutshell, dude. So, uh, this, this I was completely out of my comfort zone. I should have said Tamir. Honestly, I, like I should. I, I do. Just said Blue I was Green very Red. surprised when we initially thought of this idea. That was the one thing that I was like, I was guessing what color you're going to pick, and I was like, oh, definitely red. And when you said white, I was like, what? <laughs> um, but um, I think so. Like, I dug my own grave here, but I think what the association was, like, you said, hey, let's pick a color. I think I was going to the bathroom at the time, and I was like, oh, pick a color. And then I saw the white roll of toilet paper to me, and I said, oh, yeah, white. (laughs) So um, before we finish everything up, I do want to quickly touch on um, where we think our deck's set at a, like, competitive level. Um, (laughs) Where your your deck does (laughs) I I think mine's fine at a casual table. Uh, The milling might annoy people, but ultimately this isn't going to be a deck that's going to run the table. I mean, it'll do cool stuff, but it feels very much like why I like playing Glenn so much is it scales to the table pretty well, right? So if someone... And mine is clearly going to, when Grand Prix start going around again, this is going to be the meta. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. You got Derevi, and you have Thrasios. Like, what what else yeah. do you need? Exactly. I think uh, Force to be reckoned with. Uh, I don't think people are going to even remember Demonic uh, Consultation, Thassa's Oracle, after they see nah. this. White Storm is coming at you. But White Storm. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's all we got for you today. Benson, you want to do some closing thoughts? Uh, my closing thought is again, I think I said it halfway through the episode, but, uh, I'm not going to build with white anymore because this was 
not only challenging, but like, like look at this hot mess. Um, you complimented me on it. I still, I still don't even know. <laughs> how, I don't, I don't even know. Um, and for anybody uh, who's a content creator, um, if you're doing a deck list, don't choose cards that are sideways. Um, other than that, though, <laughs> other than that, though, to get down to the nitty gritty, we have a patron. So if you go to patron and into the 99, uh, if you like what you listen to or watch, be it Bruno Live with Han and Lotus, Parallel Thoughts with us. Uh, the Into the 99 podcast, Brian, Dan, Lotus, Ryan, me, Zach, and sometimes a guest. Could that guest be you? <gasps> Maybe. <laughs> we also have a merch store. Because if you already like the 99, why why not just get into it when you can wear it? And that's about it for me. What about you, Zach? Uh, I just want to say thanks for uh, sticking in with us. I know these decks were something so please if you have any um we all know that they left after seeing yours so if anybody wants to write um peanut butter sandwich in the chat just so i know that you made it to the end (laughs) (laughs) that you actually hear so that i actually know that you heard my list out just peanut butter sandwich (laughs) hit me up on that in our discord or in the youtube comments just peanut butter sandwich and then i'll feel (laughs) a little bit better about my uh my pile just i'd also if you like what you saw please just let us know if you would do something different or if there were, there was a blatant card that we miss just just tell us um uh, but with that i think that's going to be all for us um i've been necros parallel thoughts baby hot mess but with style just a hot mess i've been necrozak that's benson Director Brian somewhere in the multiverse. We are all wishing you guys a good night and uh, catch you next time. Peace out, Rainbow Trouts.